Well, I think Asia is incredibly important to any country's uh, economic future just because it's such a powerhouse in terms of the, the size of the economy and the opportunity that is there. I mean, you just look at the population and the, the growth of the middle class and their ability to purchase everything, uh, including for our business, importantly, automotive uh, vehicles, uh, huge opportunity, the largest market uh, as a single country in the world already. So, uh, of course, it's important for us to find a way to tap into that. You know, Linamar is a, a diversified manufacturing company. Uh, a good chunk of our business is in automotive, so we machine and assemble components and, and subsystems for engine, transmission, and driveline systems for automotive as well as commercial vehicle, both on and off highway, uh, and also make some construction equipment as the OEM. So uh, to us, uh, the, it's an exciting market because it, it's a huge and growing market that's ar already multiple times larger than North America in terms of the number of vehicles that are being produced and therefore multiple times larger uh, in terms of a potential market for us. So, you know, I think that's, uh, that's very exciting. Uh, and for our particular type of business in machining and assembly, there's not a very well-developed uh, supply base in, in China. So it's a great opportunity for us to get in and, and uh, take a leadership position there as well. So for, for Canada to be able to take advantage of uh, these growing economies uh, outside of North America, they obviously need, uh, I mean, there's challenges that they will, they will encounter as they look to uh, potentially establish operations in those countries and all the cultural challenges that come with that. Uh, you know, tra potential trade barriers if they are, you know, exporting product into those uh, countries as well. So certainly there's challenges. However, I think that the opportunities that uh, exist are much outweigh the challenges and there's ways to bridge, you know, there's ways to bridge the cultural gap, for instance. I mean, we have manufacturing facilities in China uh, that are very successful for us. We focus on the domestic Chinese or Asian marketplace with those, with those plants. Linamar has manufacturing facilities in Asia. Uh, and uh, it's been a very successful venture for us. We reached uh, profitability actually a lot quicker than we thought that we were going to, uh, despite the, the challenges of operating in a, in a new uh, culture. Uh, and I, I think that uh, we did so because we were careful to try to bridge the cultural gap. Uh, so for instance, we, we took advantage of the fact that we have a lot of Chinese Canadians working for us many of them in management and technical areas of our company who had grown up in China, knew the language, knew the culture, but had worked for Linamar long enough that they understood the expectations of the automotive industry and, and our own culture within the company. And the blend of when we sent those folks over to start the plant up, the blend of our culture and, and the Chinese culture uh, that, that we achieved through them was, uh, I think, a key factor in our success. I think the, the key elements to, uh, to thrive and survive in any uh, economy are our ability to be competitive. And competitiveness really boils down to two things, our ability to be innovative in terms of the products that we design and the processes that we design to make those products and our ability to continuously improve that, coupled with our ability to be very efficient in the operation of our, of our business and, and the manufacture of our goods. So how we plan, how we purchase, how we manage our labor costs and labor utilization are also equally important. So I, I'm a firm believer that as long as we, uh, as companies, do both those things very effectively, no matter where we are in the world, we can compete on a global basis.